Hey everybody, welcome to The Real Show Barbecue. Today I've got David Parrish with me with Adrenaline Barbecue. He's the inventor of the slow and sear. And today we're going to do the cold grate technique on the members mark reel that I picked up from Sam's a couple months ago. So he's going to kind of lead us through this and kind of show us how we're going to be using this today. David? Yep, yep, that's right. We're going to, uh, we're going to do the cold grate technique Technique, reverse sear a, a steak. I think we got ribeyes, right? Oh yeah. So some big thick ribeyes. I haven't cooked on this members mark before, so I'm excited to see how the slow and sear and, and our other accessories work on it. Awesome. And let me go ahead and let you guys know if you're in the Goldsboro Lagrange area, I picked these uh, ribeyes up from the Country Butcher, and they're Angus uh, ribeyes, and they look fantastic. Yeah, it's very good looking meat. Very good. So. Hang tight with us, guys. All right, we're about to start the reverse sear. David's going to kind of explain uh, the process for us from here, and then we're going to start cooking them. All right, so we're going to be using the reverse sear technique today to cook these ribeyes. The first thing that we did was uh, a couple of days ago, we salted them a half teaspoon of kosher salt per pound on both sides, and we covered them and put them in the fridge to let that salt uh, penetrate over time. That helps both with flavor and it gives you a juicy, uh, a juicier taste after the cook. Last night we uncovered them and let them air dry in the refrigerator. What that does is it dries the surface a little bit so it makes them easier to sear and then uh, later when we get ready to sear we're going to do the, the cold grate sear. But for now we've got our uh, we've got our, our kettle with the slow and sear at somewhere between 225 and 250. Anywhere in the, there in, the, in there is fine. We're going to put the ribeyes on, probe them, wait for them to hit 80 degrees, and then flip them, and then let them continue up to 115. At 115, we take them off, and we prep the grill for searing. So that we're ready to sear when the steaks are ready to be seared, we're going to light a chimney of charcoal when the steaks hit 100 degrees. And uh, so that's pretty much the reverse sear profile, and uh, let's get started. All right, the steaks have just reached 80 degrees, so we're gonna flip them over right quick. There you go. All right, your steaks should be around 115 internal. We're gonna double check right quick with our Maverick Instant Read. One fifteen, one sixteen, one fifteen. We're right there. Awesome. They can come off. All right, steaks just come off the grill. We got a full basket of charcoal. Dave, what's next? So, what we're going to do now is prep the steaks for the sear. The first thing we're going to do is pat them dry with paper towels. We want the surface as dry as possible because the water on the surface boils at 212. The Maillard reaction, which is what causes the sear to occur, happens at 300. So that water prevents the sear. We're going to get rid of the paper towels. Then we're going to lightly coat them with olive oil and apply a little cracked pepper. The cracked pepper is going to bloom in flavor during the sear. The olive oil is going to, uh, to smoke off, give us some extra flavor, help with the sear. And that's all we're going to have on there. We've got some oil, some pepper, some salt, and they're going to be awesome. So. Get those bad boys on. Gotcha. All right, time it for a minute. Okay, why is it cold? So we put the grate on cold because we're actually wanting to sear with radiant heat coming from the charcoal and not conductive heat coming from the grate. And what you're going to see during the cook is it makes the steaks cook evenly all over and it prevents bitter flavors from occurring when oils and fats that 
get ignited on the surface of the steak by a hot grate right. uh, burn. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, you know, we're going to uh, rotate and flip every minute here because we won't always want to have a cold portion of the grate over the hot fire. And we're going to see what happens. All right, we're coming up on a minute, so we're going to rotate and flip. Oh, look at that color. Yeah. Already. You can see you're already getting a nice sear on those even after one minute. And uh, by the time we're done, they're going to be nice. That is a beautiful color. Yeah. And you can, you can already hear, I don't know if the camera can hear it, but you can already hear, hear the, uh, the, the sizzling from oh, yeah. the steak. So, Definitely. Yeah, you know you've got a hot fire when that happens. All right, two minutes, we're going to rotate. not a bad idea to uh, go ahead and check your temperature and uh, we're still in rare territory so we can keep searing all right so we're gonna do another rotate and another flip oh man look at that crust now that is the Maillard reaction that is beautiful You want to get it um, over the sear zone. As long, as long as it's not over the reservoir, you should be fine. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. I'll let this go another minute, and they, uh, at that point, should be close to medium rare. All right, we're going to flip them over to the indirect side now. Look at those bubbles. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good sear right there. You can tell how the fat started separating on that steak that we're close to medium rare, but we'll tip them anyway. Yep, we're 125. These are going to rest up to uh, 130. This one's already 130, so yeah, we're we're in medium rare territory. We're good to go. All right, look at these steaks. They're beautiful. Dave's going to cut into them right quick for us. Here we go. One slice and done. Oh, look at that. Look at that juice. Man. Look at that. That is cooked. Perfect. Oh, nice. So let's get us pieces to chew on. Wow. Yep. Wall to wall, medium rare. Can't beat it. That's a big bite, I'll cut it. <laughs> cut it. All right, I'm looking forward to this day. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Man, it's so tender, so moist. The flavor is amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's probably one of the, if not the best steak I've ever had before, honestly. I'm trying not to say anything because I don't want to influence you, but yeah. <laughs> tell me what you think about the pepper. And because uh, a lot of people tell you not to put the pepper on the steak until after you sear it or put it in a sauce that goes on the steak. Right. We put it on right before we sear it. How do you think that worked out? I think it's great. I mean, there's nothing overpowering. The salt's not overpowering. The, the, the pepper is not overpowering. It's just enough. It's subtle. And it, you still got that nice beefy flavor. So you, you're, it's not over seasoning. It's just it's the perfect amount of seasoning, I think. Do you think the pepper's burned? No, not at all. I mean, there's there's no bitter taste or burnt taste at all on these steaks. It's just amazing flavor. Mm -hmm. Flavor. Yeah. And it's so intense. Exactly. Mm. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Dave, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you being here. Guys. Be sure to go to abcbarbecue.com, also Adrenaline Barbecue YouTube channel. Check out everything he's got. He's got some super great products. This steak is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure to subscribe and share this video. Let all your friends know about it. Thank you so much, guys. God bless. All right, the steaks have just come off the grill. And I forgot what I was going to say. Steaks have come off the grill. Steaks have just come off the grill. <laughs> we got 
a full basket of charcoal and get ready. See here, Dave, tell us what we're going to do. <laughs> do I sound that hickey? <laughs> <laughs> they ain't realize, now you got me, now I got a complex. <laughs> Blooper. I'm gonna put it right in the middle of the video. <laughs>